Hey guys, I am so excited to talk to you today about Cenobita variabilis. Now, Aussie hermit crabs, I think, are probably the coolest crabs. Uh, I am a little bit biased. I do have strawberries as well, but Aussies sort of take the cake, but don't tell my two strawberries that. Now, I started off four and a half years ago with your stock standard pet store sort of set up, which is horrible. Hopefully in the future we can change that perception of what's basic for hermit crabs. Now, about two years ago, my Aussies started to breed, uh, or they were mating and courting and all that sort of stuff. So I started Holy Crab. And from there, I've just got this lighthearted blog where I talk about Aussies and, and care tips and that sort of stuff, but mostly just talking about the crazy stuff that they get up to. And the real motivator there was being able to document the mating behavior um, and also spread awareness and advocate for these little guys because I think that's really important. Even though we're here to talk about Aussies, we're not here to talk about me. So I think it's time that we move on to the crabs. Aussie hermit crabs can be found in the northern regions of Australia with the ones that we get at the pet store. Um, they come from a remote stretch of beach called 80 Mile Beach. Now, it's actually 220 k's long, but we're not being fussy. The area is considered subhumid to humid, with the humidity sort of fluctuating between 30 and 86 throughout the year. And for the purpose of this video, I'm going to speak specifically about the Aussies that are found in the Exmouth Gulf. Now, these little guys are found in the mangroves and along the beaches, and the beaches over there are made of a fine quartz silica with a, a small grain size of about 0.4 millimeters. In addition to that, there's a calcium carbonate content of about 39%, and that comes from shells. As you get closer to the mangroves, the nutrient sort of density in that area really increases. It, it just goes crazy. It's widely accepted that Aussies require a substrate ratio of eight parts play sand to one part coir peat. And this promotes a well-drained and aerated substrate, but it's not really nutrient rich like they would have back in their natural, beautiful home. So what I like to do is I like to add some leaf litter and worm castings. Uh, I add shell grit or eggshells, sometimes moss as well. And that gives the crabs you know, a, a food source while they're digging, but it also gives the substrate a nutrient balance. Make sure you start off with nice deep substrate right from the beginning to make sure that the Aussies have plenty of digging space. These guys might be small, especially compared to a strawberry, but they are destructive diggers. When it comes to pools, it's really important to have nice deep water. Aussies love to swim and a lot of the time you'll find them in the saltwater pool. Otherwise, they'll be sitting on the side using their claws for water uptake. It's really important to use a marine grade salt not an aquarium salt when mixing your water. Use red sea salt for Aussie pools for the salt pool and sea chem prime to dechlorinate any water that you use in the tank. Now with heating I found it much more affordable to use heat cords and when you use heat cords you have to insulate your tank because you need to have that even distribution of heat. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to keep the temperature between 26 and 32 degrees Celsius. Because if that temperature drops, these little guys are going to start to become lethargic 
and you know their metabolism is going to slow to the point where they don't recover. One of the coolest things I think is watching the crabs establish a pecking order or hierarchy. My two male crabs, McDreamy and McSteamy, are constantly battling it out to see who can be the top crab. So far, McDreamy is the one who sort of comes out on top every time. What usually happens is they'll raise themselves up to look even bigger than they are. And you'll see in this video, it's a really great display. This is over food. This is just one of the times that they will, you know, sort of battle it out without fighting to see who comes out on top. Now, McDreamy, I think he sort of understands that he's big enough, he's old enough, he's mature enough to just grab what he needs and go. So that's what he starts to do. The crab on the right is McSteamy and he just wants to battle. He wants to be the top crab. And so far, over the past year and a half of this behavior really kicking off, he hasn't really won. Now, here you see him climbing on top of McDreamy, just trying to be the, the top crab, but he just isn't getting it. I've been really lucky over the past couple of years to see some really interesting guarding and mating behavior within my Aussie tank. Now, I haven't had any success raising the little babies to land yet, but that is a continued effort. Within a couple of hours of mating, the eggs are visible in the female shell and it's very cool to see these beautiful bright orange eggs. And over the next 28 days, they turn from that beautiful orange to an almost clear egg with two little black dots for eyes. And it's just the sweetest little thing to see these amazing little life forms. In the wild, mating season takes place between October and April. This is when the temperature is around 28.3 degrees Celsius. This is the perfect time to be having babies because it's our summer uh, or our warmer months, I should say. And there is an abundance of food sources. The waters are warmer as well, which helps with larval development. In the wild, a mating pair will continue to mate throughout the season. The male will also guard the female, ensuring that she doesn't release her eggs too early uh, and making sure that no other male moves in on his chance of um, mating again throughout the season. In my tank, however, it's a little bit different. I have my dominant male, which is McDreamy. I have my second dominant male, McSteamy, and I have an intersex crab called Slimer. Now, Slimer was a rescue, and when I got him, he was a sheep. So usually what happens is McDreamy loves on all the girls and McSteamy and Slimer uh, have to sort of try really hard to get any attention. <laughs> I would really love to do some more research on intersex crabs, especially because Slimer was able to fertilize two lots of eggs. Now, this absolutely blew my mind, seeing as he had gonopause when I got him. Cinnabita variabilis, or Aussies, have a much smaller 
abdomen in comparison to, say, a strawberry or a purple pincher. It's very important to make sure that Aussies have the lighter D-shaped shells available uh, just because that's what they're anatomically built for. Uh, they're not meant to have the big bulky shells. Now in this video what you'll see is one of the crabs is upside down chipping away at the shell. This is why it's so important not to have painted shells. Aussies will modify their shells to fit their bodies perfectly and they'll do this on the inside and the outside. Aussies do come in amazing varieties of colours. That is how they got their name, Variabilis. So on the left you can see the crab is a mix of brown and orange and this beautiful purple. And then on the right they were white and dark brown and that sort of beigey colour. This final video is equal parts repulsive and fascinating. You can see the crab really digging in there to clean those gills. Now I hope this has helped shed some light on who Aussie hermit crabs are and their slightly different needs. Thank you so much for being here.